What's up, man? How you doing? Good. Um, <sighs> it figures a bug flies right in my face. Okay, um, take two. I'll use your name. Exact. Exact. Exacto. He calls me Exacto. Yeah, the Spanish, <laughs> the Spanish call me Exacto. I figured I'd be editing <laughs> of, of, of the dialogue, but sure. Exact. What's up? Can you um, ask the question again? Exact. I consider you... No, no, can you start over where he's from? So oh, just start all right, over. if you want that on camera, sure. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from South Florida, West Palm Beach. Born and raised. I consider you potentially the ambassador to the new school. You ushered it in um, as a figure that wasn't visible before Resident Alien, and then suddenly a whole new era happened. I kind of need to understand where your interest came from and how you got to that point. Uh, yeah, I mean, basically, when I was younger, I would go to a skating ring, and that's the first time I heard Planet Rock, Clear, all that music. And it, in it interested me right off the bat. It was captured my, like, mind. You know, to me it was like a mystical music. You know, it was like very, like, outer space, you know, just, just something not from this planet. And it instantly captured me as, as, a, as a young kid going to the skating ring, buying the members only jacket, you know, hanging out and just looking forward to that like every weekend. And, you know, that's, I just got into that as a young kid, started buying records. My first record that I bought was Egypt, Egypt. And, you know, it just, to me was like an escape. You know, when I listened to that music, it didn't matter any problems I had, anything that was going on. If I had my electro, you know, that was, that was really where it was at, and I just really enjoyed that music. So that's how I was introduced, you know, to the entire, you know, spectrum of things. And from there, you know, Miami Bass came from that, <clears throat> craft work, et cetera. But that was my introduction. Um, were you a Star Wars fan? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Who wasn't? Do you think that influenced why Electro was? Star Wars? Um, I never really, I never really saw it that way. I, I just think, uh, overall, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure Star Wars was the, you know, catalyst to Tron and, you know, Starman, whatever, all those different movies. But I don't know, to me, it was just the eighties were just kind of collaboration between Atari and the music and the movies. You know, it just kind of was the 80s. <laughs> you know what I mean? Do you think your age at that time influenced your vision of the 80s? In other words, if you were if you were seven years older than you are, your version of the 80s would be something very differently. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, maybe it was like my innocent time in my life, you know? <laughs> so. It, it's, it's said often that... that Miami Bass is direct offshoot of Electro. Um, I contend that Def Jam wedges itself right in the center. That you have Electro, and Electro kind of died out in 85. And then you have Def Jam 85, 86, and then Miami Bass happened. Do you have any idea how relevant that is or isn't? Well, I mean, when Electro came out and I was a fan of it, I was very young, but I did notice all of a sudden one day it was gone. And Miami bass still went on and hip hop started from that, in my opinion. But, um, doesn't burp online order. <laughs> but, um, no, the 80s stuff, as far as electro was concerned, it seemed like it was just gone one day. But then you had hip hop, you had, you know, Miami bass. But I did miss just that old school electro funk, you know, but Miami bass. Yeah. I think it was actually like spawned every single sample and every song for Miami bass was from clear planet rock, you name it. <laughs> so I, yeah, I think it was definitely directly like, uh, influenced by it and definitely spawned it in my opinion, but it just put that South Florida flavor on it, you know?
What was the first Miami bass record that you heard? Wow. Um, I mean, I don't know. This is probably a very, uh, you know, weird thing to say, but in my opinion, I think the very first Miami bass record was Egypt, Egypt, and Egyptian Lover, Girls, like just his uh, style was all about sexuality. And up to that point, you know, Electro was about outer space and robots and all that stuff. And Egyptian Lover made it about sex. He made it like, you know, brought in the whole sexuality aspect. And in my opinion, that's really Miami bass, for the most part, kind of drove off of his style, off of his persona, that you could actually talk about real stuff on a record and not talk about you know, outer space or whatever. And he made, he made, he made Electro real. He made it like where you could relate, trying to get girls. What is DJ if he can't scratch? You know, getting a little attitude in the music. So personally, I think that, you know, Miami Bass, for the most part, took that vibe, that feeling, that persona, and, you know, went from there. But let me see. If I had to say what was the first Miami Bass... I think it was Ghetto Bass was the very first on Power 96, I heard Ghetto Bass. And when I heard that, it was kind of electro, you know, but it had that like bass feel to it. And it was South Florida, you know, so. Are you aware that was recorded in California? Oh, really? <laughs> no, I wasn't aware of that. Um, also with Egyptian Lover, not, not to be uh, contradicting, I just I want to make sure we're all on the same page with the facts, of course. Um, Egyptian Lover openly admitted, I was not influenced by Kraftwerk or Planet Rock. I was influenced by Prince. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah, no. I, I booked Egyptian Lover to play in Miami for the first time in 23 years. I had a show with him, and it was the first time he had played in Miami, like, years. And until that, I, I seeked him out, I looked for him, and I found him basically under a rock. He was not producing music. He was done with it. And I offered him a lot of money to come and play in Miami. And then when he came into my, to play in Miami, all of a sudden he had two new tracks. So, um, but yeah, I spent a lot of time with him. You know, he's he's one of my biggest mentors, and yeah, he told me. And he also claims that he's the one that actually invented drop bass. He said that to me. I don't know. To to what bass? Drop bass, where you take tones of bass. And what record? I know. I I was thinking the same thing, but <laughs> I'm just telling you what he told me. I, I contend. I contend. It's Bass Machine. It's Bass Machine by uh, Mantronics and Tila Rock. And okay. I, I, I have a hard time thinking of anything. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I thought I owned all of this records. I could be wrong. Anyways, hey, my, that's, my your, that's your department. <laughs> I'll take your word for my it. My issue is <laughs>